Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today we are going to be checking out the Geekcom IT8 versus its direct competitor, which is the Intel Nook. And the results pretty surprising. So let's get started. Now, first I want to thank Geekcom for sending this over to me and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. So I figured the best way to review this guy is to compare it to its direct competitor. Now to start off with the hardware specs, this guy is running an i5-8259U, which is the same as the Intel Nook. It's also got 16 gigs of RAM, same as this guy, on single channel. Now this is running 512 gigabytes NVMe, and this is what they consider the tall model. So you'll be able to fit a two and a half inch drive on the bottom lid. Now taking a look at the internals a little bit, there are slight differences. The Geekcom actually uses a ribbon cable versus the Intel where they use a full SATA cable, which I feel the Geekcom does do a little bit better because it's a little bit cleaner and easy to manage. Now you can't tell from this photo itself, it looks like they're both using NVMe, but the Geekcom is actually using true NVMe drives while the Intel ships with a SATA SSD. So that is not an M.2 that is in there. While both of them are on single channel, which it will definitely benefit from dual channel, uh, the Geekcom is shipped with 3200 megahertz, while this one is only shipped with 2666 megahertz. So it is slightly slow on the RAM side. Now, as far as their appearance go, they both exactly the same footprint. The front on Geekcom does support a USB-C, as well as a USB 3.2 in front and a power button. Now on the side, the Geekcom supports a full SD card versus the mini SD on the Intel Nook. And then in the back, this is one thing that I actually do like about the Geekcom is that it supports HDMI as well as DisplayPort, which allows you to plug in two monitors right off the bat. If you really needed to, the USB-C in the back of the Geekcom is also DisplayPort supported, so you can actually fit up to three monitors and it shouldn't have a problem. It still has two USB 3s as well as gigabit ethernet, and then a 19 volt barrel connector, same as the other guy, which is the Intel Nook. Now using both these guys in a desktop manner, which is what it's built for, is surprisingly well. I don't have any hiccups. It's actually very smooth. I could load in a lot of applications, YouTube, stuff like that, and it doesn't even boggle a bit. Now here's the where all the difference starts coming in. While the Geekcom does come shipped with Windows 11 Pro, uh, the Intel Nook does not come with the activated Windows and it is on Windows Home and it was also on Windows 10. So for this test, what I did was upgrade the Intel Nook to Windows 11 just so they have the same exact operating system so I could run benchmarks with. But otherwise, that's a pretty big deal if you're planning to buy one of these and Windows is not registered. Geekcom wins on that fact because you get an activated Windows Pro. Now running benchmarks on this guy, it's a little bit surprising because they're both on the same exact CPU and same exact specs almost. But first thing you're gonna notice is that the hard drive on both these guys this one is running a true NVMe M.2, which is 2400 megabytes on read, while this guy is on a SATA SSD, so you could see the huge difference in there. It's only about 400 to 500 read on this guy. Now, as far as CPU benchmarks, the Geekcom is actually a hair faster, just a hair. It's not like surprisingly fast. You might not even notice it on a user-based uh, environment, but it is a hair faster, and that's probably due to the fact that it's got faster RAM. So you do get the 3200 megahertz versus a slower 2666 on the Intel Nook. So yes, it is slightly faster in performance. As far as gaming benchmarks, again, it's a hair faster with the Geekcom itself. Again, that's probably due to the fact that you do get a little bit faster RAM. If it was dual channel, honestly, I think it would be a lot faster, but 16 gigs of RAM on 3200 megahertz is pretty good. So all in all, with a direct comparison to what you would get from the Intel Nook and what you would get from the Geekcom, the Geekcom does provide you with better hardware. The only thing that I'm not able to test is reliability because I only had these for about a couple of weeks. So I don't know how long it'll last if any hardware would break down or anything, but I doubt it. I mean, it's using the same exact hardware, uh, CPU wise and everything. So to mainly talk about the Geekcom, I did test its voltage out and on idle, it's about 11 watts. And when I'm usually browsing the web and going through stuff, it's about 30 watts just on average use. And when I'm playing a game and using the GPU and the CPU, I've seen it peak around 69 to 70. So maximum I've seen around is 70 if you're planning to play like a heavy loaded game like X4 Foundations. Now I did manage to test a few games with this guy even though it's not meant to do that, but it does have a little bit faster of a GPU on here which is the Intel Iris Plus 655. It's a little bit faster than the Intel HD 500. So yeah, you might get like one or two frame more, but 
Otherwise, I was able to test older games on this as well as newer games. So the first game I tested was Art of Rally and it ran that fine on 720, medium quality. And yeah, I didn't have any lagginess. Unfortunately, when I was doing the test, I was not able to get Reaver Tuner working. I thought I did and then I just it just blanked my mind. But it does feel very smooth. It feels like it was getting 60 frames. That's just off my feelings itself. So yeah, it was doing pretty good. Now, jumping into a heavier game that I just recently started playing, which is X4. It does run at 720, not great. What I feel it's like doing about 10 to maybe 15 frames per second. It's not like dead slow, but it is able to run it. And I have some screens of me just flying outside of the space station, doing some warps and some other stuff here and there, just floating around to see how the graphics work. And it seems to run the game. There's times where I was able to install this on machines that it wouldn't even run past the post. Like I wouldn't go past the loading screen and stuff like that. So yeah, it is able to do it. Now I did play a quick pinball game and that takes like almost next to no resources and that seemed to be working as well. Now I did throw in some emulators on here and I was playing PlayStation 3. And yes, it does work with PlayStation 3, but not perfect. For some odd reason, I am getting weird caching and artifacts and I am playing around with the settings. Using the same exact settings that I would do on my own desktop, it still causes these artifact issues in the game. And the game seems to be running around like maybe 30 frames. That's what it feels like to me, 30 to 25 frames per second. It's not super smooth and it does have it's a little bit of lags and everything. So playing PlayStation 3, while it can, even on a fully supported game like the game I was just playing, it's not able to get full performance out of the PS3. All in all, I do like the Geekcom IT8. It is all in all a very good desktop computer, especially the support for three monitors at one time. For desktop usage, I find this to be pretty amazing. I don't find any hiccups or slowdowns or anything or any like particular thing that would force me to stop using it like slow loading or anything. Because of the NVMe and the quick load times, I feel like this is a pretty fast computer. As far as games go, not so much. You could play the older games, maybe 2015 titles and older, but anything newer than that, it's not going to be able to support because you are still on an integrated graphic card. Now, the big question is, which one would I buy? Honestly, this is the Intel 8th generation CPU. And if you're doing a direct comparison, taking the same CPU and comparing to each one, I would rather prefer the Geekcom over the Intel Nook just because you're getting a better hardware and obviously the benchmarks a hair faster. Even though you're not going to notice it as much when you're using it, that tells a difference on the hardware itself already. And if you upgrade this to a dual channel, you're gonna get a better performance boost. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys have any questions about the Kikam or want me to test specifics, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.